Some of them have already dealt with Medicaid, and some of them are trying to deal with Medicaid. Yeah. Well, you're on the trying to deal with it list, so um, okay. obviously, while you were gone, the governor won the controlling board. Can you talk a little bit about last week, but now that he's actually done it, can you speak a little more about your thoughts on the, on the move and what he's trying to do? Well, I, I believe Monday he will be in front of a uh, controlling board. Um, again, I believe in legislative issues, but on this issue, the legislature's given the governor authority a number of years ago. Um, we tried to take that authority away in the budget. The governor used his line item veto to keep his authority. And so I think he can do it. The issue for us then is uh, controlling board uh, doesn't approve Medicaid expansion. The controlling board merely says that if you do Medicaid expansion, all that money goes in the federal funds account, uh, can't be spent for Medicaid. If we don't move the money from the federal funds account and authorize it to go over the Medicaid account, Medicaid goes bankrupt. Um, that money uh, from the expansion that the governor has authority to do will be spent down. And uh, current Medicaid recipients, you know, kids and, and, and moms and, and people that are currently covering the Medicaid program would not have, have services. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a good result. And so I would imagine that controlling board on Monday will, uh, will give the governor uh, authority to move from that federal line to the, to the state line. Okay, well obviously there's four Republican votes, two on your side. You anticipate one of your members, we, I mean, the, I'll be honest, the money's on Chris Widener, but considering Bill Coley's past statements about expansion, but I didn't know, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I would hope the governor knows the answer to that. I don't yet know the answer as to where the votes are going to be. Um, my members, I, I've indicated to the governor when they, he suggested this to us early as an option, that I did not feel inclined to swap my members. Uh, mm -hmm. I generally trust my members when we appoint them to committees to do what's in uh, Ohio's interest and to do what's in uh, the interest of their districts as good representatives. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't intend to swap people out on controlling board to get any particular result. Um, I believe the governor has confidence that he'll have support, but I don't know, I haven't done the vote count, I don't know how, for example, Chris Revton's going to vote, maybe you do. Um, I don't know how uh, his chairman, Mr. Cole, is going to vote, maybe you do, my guess is the governor does. Um, but from that perspective, um, my members on controlling board, I've encouraged to research the issue mm -hmm. and make a vote that uh, you believe would best serve your constituents and best serve the people of Ohio. I mean, if, if it does, in fact, if they do, in fact, give the yes vote, is, is this going to be a good thing for the state? Well, uh, you know, I'm not a, a, a personally a huge fan of Medicaid expansion without knowing the other half of the question. What are we going to do when the federal money isn't 100%? Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to work on that. Um, from that perspective, to me, it's all about sustainability. That's a different question right now, um, if it's going to happen, than when you're asking whether you're going to do it or not. I, I don't know that I would necessarily have been a fan mm -hmm. of expanding Medicaid. But that's not the question anymore. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, how do we do Medicaid reforms that are going to make the system more efficient, more effective, and provide coverage to more people for less money? And I think, effectively, we're going to do that. We have a hearing this week on the Medicaid reform bill, the bipartisan Medicaid reform bill, that will help bend that cost curve and make Ohio more efficient uh, in that process. Uh, I think that that's a priority. It was a priority before the governor made his decision to do Medicaid expansion by executive order. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a priority after the fact. And so we anticipate getting that bill out soon. Uh, we're going to have a couple hearings next week as well. Uh, I don't know when we're going to vote on it. Uh, maybe as soon as next week, could be three, four weeks from now. Um, but I think it's important that we do that to promote that efficiency and cost savings. Do you believe that bill does enough to do that? I mean, it does, it's, it's a good first step. I don't know that you can ever do enough in this because it's a moving target. As you learn more, you can adjust. But it's certainly a good first step. It moves in the right direction. What do you say to the people out there who are scratching their heads who don't agree with Medicaid expansion? You guys have held pretty firm against that for the last 10 months or whatever, and now it appears you're going to go along with it in this way. What, what do you say to those well, people? Well, first of all, I, I, disagree, I disagree that we're going along with it in this way. I, I don't know that we're doing the Medicaid expansion. The governor is doing the Medicaid expansion. He does it by executive order. The question then is once he's done that executive order, which he has the authority to do, remember, we had a provision in the budget that said, not so fast. He exercised his constitutional authority to veto it. Um, but from that perspective, uh, what, are they, what do we say to him? I say, well, now we have to manage. We have to manage under the circumstance that exist. And I don't think it would be management to sit back and say, look, um, 
you know, we're just going to ignore the problem of Medicaid. We're going to do Medicaid reform. I said we were doing Medicaid reform without regard to whether we did expansion or not. Because whether, if we didn't, let's just assume for a second he doesn't do expansion. Changes his mind tonight. We still need to do Medicaid reform. In 1980, Medicaid made up 16.9% of the state budget. This year, at the end of this biennium, without any Medicaid expansion, it's 50.2%. That's a dramatic change. It's a change to stopping our ability to educate kids. It's a change to stopping our ability to maintain our roads. It's a change to stopping everything else we want to do in Ohio to move the state forward. Adding more people to that problem isn't going to make the number less than 50.2%. And so we need to manage that problem through reform. And I think we can get there. Dave Burke's come up with some really good ideas that uh, arguably over a couple of years will allow us to provide better services and less money. And I think that's the goal. And so what do I say to folks who are opposed to Medicaid expansion? Let's make sure we're operating as efficiently as we can to eliminate the fraud, the abuse, the waste. And, and, then, and then let's talk about how we can rein in the costs of, of health care in the state. And it's not just Medicaid. It's Medicare. It's private insurance costs. Frankly, it's the headwinds coming from Washington. Um, I'm very concerned about the dysfunctionality of Congress. I'm very concerned about what employers are saying about us becoming a part-time economy because of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, depending on which way you want to put it. I'm very concerned about what that means to our economic activities. While Ohio is doing far better than we were, and we're doing better because of state policies, we're focusing on jobs, and that's been our focus, jobs. What I'm also very concerned about is that the headwinds from Washington are impeding our ability to continue job growth. And you're going to start seeing an erosion and the good things we've done because of the headwinds in Washington. So my response to those folks is let Washington know you want Ohio to have autonomy and flexibility and tell them to block grant us the health care dollars and we'll do a far more efficient, better job of covering more people for less money. I'm sorry, 